It was like a, a glamour grime where you'd have that mixture of like really posh, huge shoulder pads and and like uh, androgynous yeah. style, and then like filthy. And they're just throwing money at people and drinking your martinis and snort, snorting coke, listening to Aha while they you know homeless guys fight each other. That seems like big 80s kind of thing. What is going on? Casey here from WTF is Web3 doing a little bit of post-production work and slipping in a clue for our Hack Our Wallet giveaway. But I uh, just wanted to give you guys some notes that I made on what we discussed. Now in this episode, uh, we start off with John and I trying to do a one-on-one, -on -one, just he and I jib-jabbing, chewing the fat, talking stuff. But Ty Lopez just insists to barge in. You'll see. He just he just wants to be involved with the interview, but he doesn't want to get on camera. Uh, but some of the stuff we discuss, I mean, this is all like well within the same wheelhouse. This is almost the same subject the entire time. Uh, 80s homeless fight clubs, Ty Lopez, NFT utilities, nose blindness, mint sizes and failed mints and the aftermath of failed mints. And floor prices. So as you can see, it's basically all the same subject. I mean, it's so closely related. I mean, the segues you can imagine are almost unnecessary, just right into the next thing. But uh, yeah, that that clue for the seed phrase for uh, clue number nine, seed phrase number nine, is in today's episode somewhere. I'm about to just go drop it in somewhere randomly. Or I could find a break in the conversation. So if you're looking for that clue, it's going to be in there. If you're not familiar. We've got a MetaMask that's got some NFTs in it. We're dropping seed phrase hints on different social media platforms. So you can hack our wallet, get those NFTs. I explain it more later on in the episode when I do that drop. But uh, yeah, follow us everywhere. Subscribe everywhere. Have those alerts on. Join the Discord. There's going to be links in the show notes. And uh, good luck. Get those NFTs. We've got more games like this coming, so uh, definitely stay tuned, get involved, and join that Discord because you could be a part of this stuff. And you know, Discord is like where our favorite children are. So if you want to be one of our favorites, maybe a little bit more than just subscribing and following us on social media is necessary. Okay. All right. Let's roll that uh, possibly copywritten intro, but uh, don't tell Oscar Isaac. Welcome to WTF is Web3, where we untangle the uncertainties of Web3 technologies. Be sure to check out the show notes for more information, giveaways, and ways to stay in touch. You're also going to want to make sure that you're subscribed to our podcast, our YouTube channel, and our private group so you don't miss out on exclusive content, freebies, and much more. All right. What's good, Casey? Not much, man. Well, a little bit of everything all at once. Uh, it's, it's been A little bit of everything. All of the time. All of the time. Yeah, Bo Burnham. Shout out to Bo Burnham. I wonder if Bo Burnham is going to do an NFT. I always wonder, like, who who is beyond an NFT? Who is like, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. Like Grant Cardone, I, I always think, is Grant Cardone going to do an NFT? He's got to. I, I, he was just speaking at the uh, Miami NFT convention. Nobody's beyond it. Bezos just came out and was like, you know what? I could, I think we can do an NFT. I think we can sell NFTs. What about What about Banksy? Think Banksy would do one, or is that well? Too... There's the, there's the not Banksy. Have you seen those? Yes, yes, I have. Yeah, they're definitely not Banksy's. Definitely not. But maybe they are. That would be a Banksy, very Banksy thing to do. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I was tempted to jump into that to YOLO into that thing, but uh, didn't. Yeah, didn't I, go anywhere. I think it's. I, I think it's still just sort of stagnant. It may have actually been down a little bit here in the last couple of weeks. I haven't even looked at it recently. I did look at some real Banksy's. I, I went down to Miami. Um, was that last week or so? There's a Banksy exhibit going on. Really cool. His uh, his stuff is phenomenal. When when Jay and I were in uh, London, we actually hunted down some Banksy's. And this is before Banksy was really big. This is 15 years ago or so. We actually no, found wait, wait. some. Describe legit. hunted down because I'm picturing like some people that were pretending to be Banksy going around. Doing we had spears. Like, and, and yeah, you guys were going and torches. Around, it was brutal. Like, 
was it a John Claude Van Damme movie or Steven Seagal movie where he they hunted homeless people in New Orleans from like the early nineties? That seems like a oh, that was John Claude Van Damme, and he was like fighting in like a a homeless uh kind of yeah. fight okay. club kind of thing. I'm, I'm picturing people. something kind of like that meets like a street art element. I, I I don't know, especially the London. I'm for some reason in my mind it's set in the eighties. Anything is street art in London is set in the eighties. Very much, yeah. That that yeah. was a, that was a big time. It's a, it was a grimy decade for sure. Oh, yeah, it was like a, a glamour grime where you'd have that mixture of like really posh, huge shoulder pads and and like uh, androgynous yeah. style, and then like filthy. And they're just throwing money at people and drinking your martinis and snorting coke, listening to Aha while they you know homeless guys fight each other that seems like big 80s kind of thing i don't know i was big 80s vibe i loved atomic blonde speaking of which big fan of that movie i think there's a sequel coming out so yeah the charlie Theron one 80s london Uh, i feel like that's one i maybe saw once and then just in one year out the other wasn't it wasn't it monster was a great one one. but by charlie's i wonder if charlie's Theron is going to do do an nft i don't see why not if i had any sort of celebrity i would just I would do something. I could come up with something, but you got to use the crowd if you got one, you know? The athletes are all about it, right? Like Tom Brady did his. Yeah. Uh, um, Sue was real big into crypto and NFTs for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you have so, the celebrities that are creating their own, like Gary V. Like Ty Lopez. Let's talk like about Ty, Ty Lopez. Okay. All so, right. You want to talk about Ty Lopez? What do you want to talk about about Ty Lopez? So, so you, I, I, I'm in the discord with Ty Lopez. I respect what the man does. He, he kind of, he kind of makes me cringe a bit. I, I definitely think he's, he's a he's smart guy. Good. He's success and successful, but it's the whole, like, here I am in my life. Here I am in my garage library with all these books. See all these books. I read all these books. So wait, 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 is he calling? That, that's him. He's calling in. He's, oh, he's through just, me. It's like ghost. Just, just We're going to have to have him call in. Cover your mouth. Say hey guys! Oh, he's oh, he's, he's right off camera. He's Ty, come on over. No, no, I'm camera shy. My ha- my hair's messed up. Come on, Ty. I got all well, these. Always books. looks like that, Ty. Come on. I got to put books in my shelf. Okay. All right, Ty. Later. He's he's gone. So busy. He's always but, busy reading those books. But he jumped on the NFT thing, of course, because he's running with it though. He is, and I'm in the Discord as are you. Um, I didn't make the mint, but I. I, I feel like I don't know where that one's going to be going because I don't understand. And maybe you can explain the project to me and I'm open to it, but here are my critiques of it. Um, number one, as I understand it and correct me and critique me, uh, like one of the, he, he has a, a bunch of different tickets that you can get a bunch of different cards in these NFTs. So they're not like unique art, but some of them based on their serial number or whatever, they'll give you certain stuff. Like uh, you could play a, a game of horse with him I, i've seen some of his videos i do follow the dude and i, I watch his stuff you play a game of horse with him you could have lunch with him but like the lunch one you could have lunch one day a year and then they expire over three years so unlike other nfts which have like a for the most part a long-term utility perpetual these- generally they generally or, or at least they don't enunciate when there will be an expiration for it, where he has come out from the very beginning and said, yeah, this is going to last for three years, which is bizarre, right? Because you think yeah. there'd be a depreciating element to it because you know, the, the, the older it gets, the less of value it has, but exactly. it's, he's adding other elements. There. So yeah, you're right on that. There's like two tiers. I think he's doing with his, it's just a ticket. Everyone looks the same. It's not like there's like unique imagery to any it's of them. It's full utility. It's just utility. It's a utility play, but also an appreciation because He's trying to, and the scarcity element, right? Because there is only so many of it. So it's not full utility. It is a, a scarcity play a bit, just like cryptocurrency is in general. But the value or, of or, it. or the floor of any NFT project, right? Like a lot of times if you get that floor one, whatever the most common one is, you're still just playing whatever the scarcity is for the overall yeah. project. So it's, it's yeah, it's not for the arts. It's definitely not an art play <laughs> by and any he- stretch of the imagination. He, and he's he's said some stuff that like I can critique. It, it would be one sided because not he's not here to maybe like expand on these ideas. But like one of the things he was saying, he's like, you know, here he comes in. He's going to come in now. Uh, yeah, I, I think I know what you're going to say. Uh, in the future, I was predicting that colleges are going to use NFTs instead of you paying tuition. 
See, that's what he was saying. How's that going to work, Ty? Well, instead of you paying tuition to the college, let's say it's like a hundred grand, right? And then when you're done, you got your degree. Now you can sell that NFT and somebody else can go to that college and uh, they could maybe pay you a hundred grand or maybe they, they sell you buy it, buy it for like 80 grand or maybe it's appreciated and you can, you know, sell it to them for like 150 grand. But Ty, how would that work? Because now they still have to pay the staff, the overhead of the college and like all that. And the college is only getting like a small royalty. Yeah, exactly. They'd make a royalty. Yeah, but the royalty is like five, ten percent. Oh, I gotta. I, I think my shelf just fell over. I gotta go. I tie no. See, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I know. And he has said that with those NFTs that he's launched, the the OG NFT, that that also will have some sort of pass into yeah, this future university that schools. he's gonna. Yeah. That he's gonna purchase a university, Could but be that's for different profit, because that's profit. recorded. Like if if I write, no, 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 no. I'm talking about a real legitimate university. So he has his courses, which are the direct usage, like that's the original utility for it. But he has said that they're going to have uh, either, yeah, I don't know the specifics. If it's you're gonna have like the first dibs to it, or it's gonna convert to it, you'll get an airdrop for it. But he is going to do that. Not in the future. This will happen. He's now put his foot down and said, no, I'm going to be the one that does this. And I'm going to either start a university or purchase a university or like partner in with the university and create this group of people that already own this NFT. And you guys can onboard and be a part of this first iteration of this experiment. Yeah. I don't know how he's playing that out. I, I sort of poked a lot of the obvious holes in it. Here, here's the thing that I, I think is going on with Ty. I think he's like, this is new. This is hot. He definitely has an eye for seeing what's new and hot. I mean, he wasn't early on this by any means. He was behind Gary Vee and basically everybody else. But he's like, this is a big he's, thing. He's looking at it a different way. He, he definitely is looking at this differently because Gary Vee just did art, right? Like it's it's his like drawings. I remember and like when that. Gary was of... saying that, he's like, I'm going to do one of these a day and just turn them into NFTs. And I was still like, you're just like really exemplifying how silly these are. Yeah, I didn't that, fully understand. I'm a I'm a utility guy. I know we've had discussions where like you're you're you know you you do have valid points with the value of art, but like going but, back to but Ty, I but but just just to make it clear, I am not like a, a full on art guy. That's like yeah, I'm about the art. Let me just drop some money because I think this art's awesome. I, I'm with you on the utility. I can just back up and see how that's not necessarily the only way to view things. No, especially with some point. of these, like, you know, if it was like a Banksy, like I'm not expecting a, a special ex experience with the Banksy or anything like that. Like if, if it's a legitimate nice. artist like Peter Tunney or yeah. and you know, there's tons of artists out there. If there's a really cool, interesting project out there and it's groundbreaking or beautiful or something that I want to be a part of, I, I could give two shits who's drawing it if I like it or what they say they're going to do after the fact. If it's just something that I'm really interested in, like that should be enough if that's what you're going for. Doesn't mean it has to be. It doesn't mean it is for everybody, but it is possible that that can be the only value in an NFT. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, it's just like the the art people. I, mean, I think people is, is a, probably one of the, the yes, the best and, examples. And there was what was funny there. I, I saw this uh, like uh, this TikTok a dude made where he's like he's playing both sides. You know how they they they'll put a hat on, they pretend they're a, a different person. He's having a conversation oh, back and forth. They're not the same. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're it's not a, an abundance of twins on TikTok. Wow. Um, okay. come, come to find out. So this dude, he's like going back and forth and he's like an artist and like a, a guy looking to buy art. And like the artist is like holding this thing. He's like, yeah, I've, I've spent years like studying how to do this and get the shapes right and express myself and like talking about the value. And then the guy's like, what's the utility? And the guy's like, uh, oh, I mean, what, what do I get? And he's like, I, you get to own it. It's like, but what's the utility? What, what do I get out of it? It's like, well, you get to have it. It's yours. And it's like, he just keeps going back and forth. He's like, but what's the utility? Then the artist is like, uh, there's going to be a, a Dow and there's going to be ah. staking. And the guy's like, I'll have it. And he's like, do you even know what that is? And he's like, nope, but nobody does. And it's just like, <laughs> so it's like, he's kind of mocking the utility aspect of it. Love it. But like, um, another thing that's ironic about what Ty says is he always says, I don't vest in stuff that rusts, rots, or depreciates, but his NFTs he wouldn't invest in because as we said, like when there's a, when you get three lunches over three years with it's Ty, yeah. when you're in, it's worth less. Unless he's or even like, one, once you pop one out, it's, yeah. it, sh it should theoretically just now be worth two thirds of what the original value was. 
You'd think, unless he's like, I plan to triple my intelligence each year. <laughs> so this Make is going to be exponentially it. better. The other thing is, I know the one you got into was the uh, the access to the hotels. And here's what I, I'm going to preface this with. I think Ty, and I was, I was kind of getting to it before, Ty, I think he jumped in. He's like, hey, turn the camera on, run it. Hey, guys, I'm doing NFTs. I need you to start buying my NFTs. I got a lot of good ideas. Just buy my NFTs. They're coming. Get my Discord. Start buying my NFTs. And they're like, what are what, his crew's like, what are what, what are the NFTs going to do? And he's like, I don't know. We'll figure it out. I got I got some books in the garage. I'll, I'll go read them <laughs> next to my Lambo. And I'll figure Your it Ty out. Ty Lopez is so good. <laughs> Call him over. I want to hear him and you. He Go, hates when I, I do this. Say, hey, Ty, nice, yeah. I already heard. I'm listening from the hall. I'm sorry, man. You know I hate it when you do my voice. I don't sound like that. I know. I know. But I do it for John. If anything, it's, you know, it's, it's just, it's a compliment. You know, I know who you are. You don't know who I am. Oh, of course I know who you are, Casey. Oh, in your house. You know, you're hanging out in my house. Yeah, you're right. So, it, uh, oh, I was just going to ask him about the whole restaurant he, thing. He, he took off. You, yeah, no, he what, off. What's the what's the restaurant hotel thing? Tell me about that. Because here's another example where I think he's like, I'm going to do this. And then they're like, all right, cool. And he's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to so, be able to float this. So he has like these different tiers, right? He had like this gold tier and the silver tier. The gold tier was these more like one-off experiences. So the things you're talking about, like courtside, hanging out with Ty Lopez at some basketball games, going to a three-star Michelin restaurant with Ty Lopez. Oh, no, there's one where you get to play horse with him. I saw you him get to play video. horse with Ty Lopez. Well, okay, I, I'm not doing it. You didn't get that one, obviously. And is there yeah. one that like has it's it's like the god mode one where you yeah there actually was and he gave it away so you got every Ooh. single one that was available and that one was just given away that, that was like one of the valuable that one is that was well that was one of the perks to to like try to get people to mint because okay. then one one randomly was going to get airdropped this one that got the god mode that got everything okay okay i get i okay so oh he didn't just give it away because i i see in his discord he's always like all right best comment on my instagram gets 150 bucks best you know like keep up the conversation yeah. i'll pick a random person in discord which is a good strategy and yeah. you know let's let's chat about that he's once smart we man up with this he gets let's, he gets, let's just chat about like community strategies and project strategies yeah but um yeah yeah so he is he's he's good at engaging people right like he's a marketer and they're good, good ideas. Get... It's just I think he he runs with them before he figures out like, wait, this is not it's not going to be sustainable. The, like the one we keep trying to get around to, the hotel and restaurant one. So that <laughs> yeah. one. So there's the different tiers is the gold one, which is what you were saying. Those sort of like one off experiences. Then the, there's this like silver tier. And there's two options for that. One was you have access to his like webinars. So all like the things he recorded that teach you everything he wants to get off his chest and give out to the world. And so that, that one's one smart because that's scalable. As yeah. I was saying before, that you record that one video, you would love to sell it full price to a million a people. Yeah. But if you it's sell it once and they sell it over and over and over and that person makes a residual and you, or you make a residual and that person gets their money back or, or maybe even makes profit on it. Like, yeah, that's cool. That's a subscription. That. Yeah. That, that makes sense. That's a cool usage. And you'll probably see a lot of people that are going to be switching over. A lot of people, a lot of businesses that are going to be creating that sort of model. An NFT will serve as the ticket to their 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 brain dump. You know so where I got the idea? It was is from all my books. I was thinking, you know, I got all these books I already read. Hey, like a library card. And I was thinking, like maybe once I'm done with these books, I'd be able to sell them to somebody. And you know, uh, like my courses. Uh, so it's the same thing. Oh well, how about the hotels and he's gone again. Uh, okay, so, so that one geez, makes sense. You keep cutting me off. All right, so the last one, so which rude. is the only reason I was actually interested was one where he was going to purchase kind of Soho. We talked about this in some yeah. utility ones. He's going to purchase a hotel and or restaurants and social clubs or nightclubs. And the NFT was going to be your ticket to that exclusive club. So you'd be a member for whatever it is. And I got interested because there was a lot of chatter that Miami was going to be, if not the place, one of the top places in consideration. And being a Miami guy and just wanted to have as much access to all these in real life opportunities in Miami... That's what made me get interested. So that's it why really I got it. It seemed like it was going to be Miami. Like, and that makes sense. That's like Miami so it's still is not. the crypto yeah. ze uh, ground zero of the world. Like we are, we are, I don't care what Silicon Valley or anybody else says, Miami's where it's at. Art and crypto. That's what we got. Yeah, definitely. I, I think Cuban Miami is, is the, the capital of that. It's not a one-for-one -one replica of Silicon Valley. It's the web three hub. Yeah. And it would make sense, right? But he's not like a big Miami guy. I guess he lives in Miami, has a place in there, but he's also like kind of, jumping around all these other places. He's always so, on his farm. 
Oh, he's on the farm. It's in Virginia near Charlottesville. Oh, actually. Yeah. Is there, is there a ticket to visit that? <laughs> there was. Get to, <laughs> yeah. You get to sit on my lap while I drive a tractor. All right. Uh, Ty, we got to, you, you want to do an interview? You want to get on camera? No, no, man. No. Okay. John was talking. All right. And sorry, John. So he announced that the one restaurant's going to be in Copenhagen, which is kind of <laughs> shitty. Just everyone. Uh, it's a hot spot all, for all vacationers. The, all business. the Copenhagians. Yeah. And the, the hotel. They, they make the chewing tobacco, right? <laughs> That's it. The dip. Okay. And the hotel is apparently going to be a London hotel, which is cool. Like I lived in London. It, it'll be cool to have a hotel there to have access to and everything because it is an expensive place to, to get some oh, yeah. accommodations. And it's a very nice hotel. But it looks like Miami may be SOL here. So maybe there'll be a night a nightclub or an exclusive club, a beach club, like a Soho house type thing in Miami. It's still not off the table. But there's uh, two less things that are looking like they're going to be in Miami. So I'm a little bummed by that. And, and then also like the, the hotel one. What would make sense to me if I were Ty, I'd be like, all right, these people are going to basically fund this hotel because I don't own it yet. So they're buying into this NFT for this hotel. It makes sense to make it a DAO. You guys are owners of the hotel. You have access or whatever else. But it's also, it's not like you have real access. I mean, you, you can book to the hotel with this nft but then i also saw an update where now he's calling it a hybrid hotel i think that was hybrid hybrid restaurant hybrid restaurant and i'm thinking yeah, and i'm not sure that does that mean that people with and without the nfts are able to access these places so it's not as exclusive as he was saying yeah i would think so uh it's not that new of a concept right like you have private clubs and yeah. so private clubs have been restaurants have been bars have even had hotel rooms access as an aspect to them that was exclusive only to the members, but there's also been private clubs that have allowed non-members in. So maybe on, on certain days or for a certain price or, you know, subject to access to all the members first. And if there's excess uh, availability, then those people can go in. So it's not like that new of a concept to have a hybrid model. So I'm guessing that's where he was going with it. Yeah. Especially for a restaurant. I mean, for a restaurant, if it's going to be a, Michelin star restaurant, you're going to want to get some general public in there. Yeah. You can't limit it to just people with an NFT. You got to cover the overhead. But the the hotel, I remember when he was speaking about that in one of the videos, he was painting the picture of like, when you're in town, you know, it's going to be in a, in a town, or it's going to be in a, a city that's like a big business city or a big travel city or both, which was my, why Miami, I think would be a no brainer. London makes sense. London makes a lot of sense though too. One, I mean, it doesn't London have the vacation crowd. It's got the business yeah. crowd. Who's, I mean, who's like, oh, let me, I'm spring breaking in London. Just the, the, the weather. Spring break isn't the only time that you get a nice vacation. complexion. But, but well, I mean, London's that's like an example. one of the most visited cities in the world, if not like the top. But that's only planet. because people have to go in and out of Heathrow to get anywhere else. Oh, yeah. Because Heathrow is like two hours away from London. So it's that really convenient Heathrow. Isn't that the isn't that the one that like if you're going to like North Africa, you, you take a flight from like Boston to London to. So Morocco. Heathrow is the major airport, but it's not okay. like in London. It's still I've only been twice. Away. You you live there, so okay, forgive me. But it, it's a it's a business sector for sure. It's like the financial capital of the world, I would say. Um of Europe for sure. But as far as vacations and everything else, I mean it's it's my aim. Okay, Casey, when were when were you in uh, London? Were, were you there for uh, business? I was there for backpacking, just oh, so just, it's it, kind of kind of my in and out. It, a vacation but i spent an equal amount of time in so you're vacationing in london okay so the only times you've ever been to london have been to vacation got it got it got it well we one, one was like was an it education or was it for for work related uh a little bit of both it was it was uh, oh, most oh. of them i'd say well, wasn't it this of, morning <laughs> was it, uh, it was this yesterday morning for, yesterday morning for, for work right it, yeah yeah it was yesterday yeah, okay. actually the last two mornings yes and got then it. tomorrow morning i'll got be back it. there again okay. also for work got it so got it. So you're you're emphasizing that it Miami's also a good work hub, but um, they're not a whole lot of bikini wearing in in London. That's all I'm saying. That's but, true. That's true. Except for like the two days a week in the middle of July when there's some sunshine and people just lay in the middle of medians and just in their bathing suits. It's so bizarre. Just, they don't know what to do with it. They're like they don't know. Out, there's no, out, there's no place out, to out. go. They just take off their clothes and just lay. I know there's grass. Like oh, this is a park. This kind of is a park. Let's do this. Like, how do we get to the roof? Um, the roof. <laughs> Uh, but, but as I was saying, he was kind of pitching it in the video as like, when you go to this hotel, you'll know that everybody else there 
is a holder of this NFT. You guys are going to be part of this tribe. You know that they're entrepreneurs, they're they're self starters, they're they're you know take no prisoners, no bullshit kind of guys, just like guys and gals, just like you, who would be great to network with. But now, if it's like a semi exclusive or hybrid thing, I might be bumping into a guy who's just like a an accountant. You know, accountants no offense awesome. to accountants. Yeah, accountants are awesome. No, but I don't, I know what you mean. You're no longer in that exclusive community. I'm going to go up like, like talking about like my, my library garage and they're going to be like, what, what, why would you keep books in a garage? What? There's exhaust. Who are you? Oil. We're all library garage people. And they're like, yeah. well, it weathers the papers really thin. And that's the name of the project, right? OG original OG, garage. Original garage. <laughs> He's just like, wait, what are they? What are, what's the vernacular? Maybe I can use something. They're like, ah, oh, they call them whitelist. Um, sometimes they call them OGs. OG. I'm gone with it. Oh yeah. Original, that's it. Original that's garage. It. <laughs> but that is where like I, the story behind that is, if anybody, if you don't know who Ty Lopez is, he's the dude who's got the video that went super viral. And he, he, he started doing it. those YouTube ads. He, he would just pop ads like crazy and everything where it'd be him with his Lambo in his garage. And he had a bookshelf in there. Shelves, and, Cause he's got so many just, books. He's got to sit there and he turned like, Oh yes, you need all these books. This is how you get successful. I read five books a day and I keep them in my garage. I just had them installed his bookshelf. Is Ty um, over at your place too? He's a, how'd he get over there? Well, we're right next to each other. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. Why don't you come into this room? That's weird that we're filming in different rooms. Yeah. You fart. Oh uh, yeah, I do. You know, I, I, I lost, hey, uh, hey, I lost, I still don't have all my smell back from COVID, but the stuff I can't smell is all bad stuff. So I can't smell farts. I can't smell. This is so fucking weird and trash. Like my fiance will walk into the apartment and she'll be like, what? the hell i'm like Ooh, i'm in trouble what i do she's like it reeks like death in here and i'm just like i am nose blind i can smell ice cream i can smell mint i can smell roses i can smell my cologne which is something i couldn't smell like cologne in my nose during covid i couldn't smell anything and now i just can't smell the bad stuff which is great <laughs> but you also don't know how bad your farts are so like if you're in an elevator by yourself and you think you're squeaking one out and you're just like you get nervous when someone else gets in the elevator on like the third floor oh, man there's like, some really good pranks to pull on you too just like oh my god casey that's terrible and, and if i get into hazmat stuff like you won't be able to smell like so i'll be like Ooh. it smells like almonds no i don't smell anything it's good it's like is it is it leaking gas no i don't smell no, anything no, i think we're good i think we're all set here but uh yeah so so that's that one and yeah you're right there, there's tons of changes going on like this let's, is one of the let's issues stop you picking on ty he he's get, gonna well, execute i will he's gonna well, figure something out just because he doesn't have it now doesn't mean he can't go like tomorrow nice. and he's like everyone who's got one i'm also adding this and then, like i said and another thing he's looking to add is the access to general this his university thing and so he yeah. is somebody that does do a really good job of Dude, executing. he bought here one he bought radio shack like yeah I, he started he turned radio shack into a a, a crypto coin yeah swap. i saw that I, yeah. I was in that discord for a while but i just i can't stick with the notifications i just and he's like staking like the staking apy is ridiculous like it is. is it like 200 and something i don't think it's that high but it is it is Some incredibly ridiculous high. amount yeah but shout so out. He's, he's, he's doing a good job of just pivoting what he was doing into this new world and he did it fast and he's executing yeah. at a really high level and so like you got to give him credit for that because he is a guy oh, that yeah. will execute I, no, I, 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 100. I would not bet against the guy. It's just like, I can see he's just like, and he's gonna follow through with it. That's probably the most frustrating thing. Is yeah. I'm like, man, I, I like, I hold back. I make sure I know what I'm talking about. And I, oh, I can get all my ducks in a row. He's a guy like, now nah, let's just let's just look for the first duck, and then I'll just like turn so the other ducks right behind him. Like yeah. that's the key. That's how you get ducks in a row. You don't yeah. put them in a row. You, it's all about your perspective. You gotta you be an active duck, and the other ducks will follow the active duck. Just, just, yeah. just run into it. Let's pick on some other projects or, or oh, I got a project on them. No, 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 no. So, so here's critique. the project definitely to pick on. So it's a project that I like looked in because I wanted to see something from the early stage and see what it looked like going through. So this, this yeah. was essentially like a, a board ape knockoff one, right? Like yeah. a super low. There's a lot price. of those out there. Lots. Yeah. And, and they're so not bad one, necessarily. I mean, yeah. they're not so, board so apes, but th this one, this one, like good artwork. It looked very good. I really liked the style of it. It wasn't like a, a, a straight one for one knockoff they still were apes and very unique in the way they designed them and very appealing. Like I just really liked the way they look. The community seemed cool. They, uh, they did like a semi dox, which is interesting. So we talked about this before, but doxing is when the, the creators of a project reveal who they really are. And it's, it's useful, especially for utilities because you want to know 
who's behind this team that's making these promises that you're relying on them actually following through on. So like Ty Are Lopez capable of falling through with these promises. Yeah. And so if it's somebody that has a great career, a great background, like, you know, you said Ty Lopez, like he doesn't have a lot of experience in the NFT world, but he's, he's at least someone, you know, has executed. He has yeah. something to lose by you relying on his name. And if he didn't follow through, it would tarnish his name. That's mm-hmm. a great thing. Or somebody that has done it before and has worked for other, other companies, like somebody from, uh, what is it? Yuga? Who's the board eight people? Yuga Labs. Uh, yeah, Yuga Labs. Yeah. So if it's like somebody from Yuga Labs, let's say they were like a, a director, kind of like one of the first hires and they like went off on their own. That would be great. You would love to see that. If I was in a project and it was like the, the second hire from Yuga Labs and he's doing his own thing, like, yeah, yeah, like I'm on board. I trust that you can do this because of the track record you have, the experience you have, and you have a reputation now that would be tarnished if you didn't follow through. So doxing is something that a lot of these projects will do so that you can get trust behind them. Because up to that point, you only saw their their little username and their like their non de plume on who they wanted to be called. Yeah. Their and so their handle and their 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 little uh all the time their NFT PFP. Yeah. And so this team did like a kind of a dox. They showed a real photo and a first name and like vague background. They didn't say, you know, I worked at Apple. They'd be like, I worked at a top tech company and for the past eight years marketed with top uh, retail clients in the U S and Europe, like yeah. kind of specific, but not really. W- one of the guys gave his real was like his full information and stuff like that. I mean, he didn't have like a crazy background. He's like a firefighter and stuff like that, but at least he was, you know, he's a real guy. And so he um, he had some experience as a moderator for some of these Discord channels. And then he was here as like the community director. But at least you know who he was, right? Like yeah. that's, it, this is something that we talked to Blake about. Blake Ian from the Tony Money Project. He was yeah. saying he doesn't invest anything unless he knows who they are. Doesn't matter if they've done nothing. If it's a 17 year old, just tell me you're a 17 year old and I know who you are. And so it was nice to see that from the one guy. But the rest of them were kind of vague about what they actually did. They gave some information and where they're from and everything. So fast forward, the uh, the project ends up minting. They, they do their wait list. The wait list was driven from a mixture of uh, activity on the Discord. White as well list. as some like the, the white list. Yeah, wait list, white list. Some, some are calling it a Lao list now. Like a Lao or Lao? Uh, a, a Lao. A Lao. A Lao, okay. Yeah, like you are allowed. The and allow a Lao list. list. Got it. Yeah. So some are calling it that, but yeah, the, the white list, sorry. And that was driven from, you know, certain hurdles on the discord. Also some like giveaways, if you won like a Twitter reply thing or other type of giveaways, their white list mint ended up maybe selling like 10% of the project. It was a pretty big mint. They were going for like almost 5,000, which was pretty large. I think their community got up to about 15,000 in the discord. So a third that's tough to say that's going to convert for their whitelist uh, mint round. They only allowed three apes per whitelister. And I think they, I don't know how many they had, not, not very many, like maybe a couple hundred in the whitelist. So it's pretty small. And so this sort of goes to the strategy I want to talk to you about, my thoughts behind it, maybe get your idea. They did that first whitelist mint and it ended up minting only like maybe like 300. So this was less than 10% of the overall mint available. And then yeah. they went into the um, the public mint, which was like 15% higher in price, right? So there was a value in whitelist, but it was capped to the amount that they could do. Not everyone that had the whitelist availability did it. And then they immediately rolled into the public mint. What's your thoughts on that just from that standpoint? You know, it was it was interesting. Uh, one of the things with the... the- uh, interview we did with Blake Ian from the Tiny Money Project was his perspective on the mint size. And it's something I would thought about, but I'd never thought about really all of the considerations you'd have to make when you're, when you're deciding what your mint number is going to be and what the, you know, OG or white, white list mints, mint amounts are going to be. And it definitely is a make or break, I think, because definitely. I'm in some groups where they they've they haven't minted everything yet. There's one in particular where I I like the community so much 
and they haven't really done much marketing. Like I, I stumbled upon them. They, they're not really, and they even said, we're not marketing yet. We're kind of waiting until we have some more things along the road roadmap brought to fruition. And the, the culture and the community, I think is so solid that nobody cares. Like this is the one room. This is the only room I'm in where nobody talks about the floor. Nobody talks about raising the floor. That's surprising. Nothing. They it's and it, a couple of people have mentioned it. They're like, I like that. This is the only chat, the only discord I've been in where people aren't obsessed with the floor and they're not freaking out about the floor. I like the avatars. I like the art. I like the, the utility behind them. Um, but going back to mint size, I see a lot of projects where if you don't, if you don't cover that mint, people just start bailing because yeah. um, NFTs are like, it's a big hype game right now, especially when a lot of these things, no matter how impressive the roadmap and the team are, we still don't know how far we are from bringing those things to fruition. So unless they're doing something today, like there's some that are, you could do staking right now. Those yeah. normally are all if, sold if, out. If there's an innate value. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, but yeah, the, it's, it's a tricky thing. I wonder, I, I I've always thought like, it'd be cool to join, I don't know, a hundred discords or whatever, and get an idea of, okay, discord size is X, the mint size is Y, the price is Z, and try to figure out where that sweet spot is, where it's like, okay, if, if this is your, your mint price and this is your discord audience, this is really a good number that you should be able to fulfill. Cause you're thinking like, okay, I got 15,000 people in this discord. They they're here to buy this NFT. I yeah. think I should be able to sell one third of them one. And no, it's like 1% sometimes, but it also comes That's down so to the culture. Oh, Hey, I didn't see you there. I bet you're wondering why this is randomly spliced into the middle of this episode. Well, I'm going to tell you, this is actually the clue of the day. Clue number nine for our seed phrase, hack our wallet giveaway, whatever we're calling it. Basically, we put a bunch of NFTs in a MetaMask wallet. Each day we've been dropping clues on different social media platforms as to what those seed phrases are. In that order, they will unlock the MetaMask and you will get all of the NFTs in there. Now there's more information on this on our TikTok and YouTube and some of the other assets, but what's most important is if you want to be timely because you are competing against other people, once someone cleans out the wallet, it's all tears for whoever's second place, right? You want to make sure that you're following us on all of our social media accounts. But if you ever have an issue finding one of the clues, you can always find it on our Discord. At the end of the day, all the clues end up on our Discord. Now, there's probably going to be links to all that stuff below. Discord is obviously a safe place to find all of the clues, but you kind of trade. If you're waiting in the Discord, you trade off the advantage of getting that clue when it's posted on social media. And again, it's gonna be sprinkled around all of our different social media accounts. We've got a TikTok, we've got a YouTube, we've got Instagram, we've got Twitter, obviously the podcast. So it'd behoove you to be subscribed to all of them, make sure your alert's on. And especially when you get near the end, you wanna make sure that you've got as much of an advantage as possible to solve the clues, get the seed phrase, and get into that wallet so you can get those NFTs. So back to today's clue. Today's clue, it's one word, as seed phrases are, and it is a homophone for the word that would describe how heavy or how light something is. That might be a little ambiguous, so I'll give you a second one. Second part of that clue would be supposedly good things come to people who do this. That probably made it too easy. Subscribe, follow, like, share, love, join, do all that fun stuff. Comment, make sure you join that Discord. So like that, that's what I've been kind of doing. Like I've been in a lot of these discords and trying to get in a lot of these projects early on to do that almost academic process of just thinking through what's working, what's the sort of the size and what do these metrics look like? What's actually converting? Cause it's sales funnel, right? Like you yeah. and I both have done sales. Like we know you're not going to convert everything. And there's some sort of ratio of what, where you start to how much you can like move on to the next level and next level and next level and actually end up getting down to whatever that call to action is you want them to do. And in this case, the call to action is the mint. 
you want them to mint. And there's a lot of drivers and things that can motivate that and, and change those sort of metrics. But ultimately, like your job is to realize that that is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and get to the point that you can maximize and fill that eventual bucket at the bottom you're trying to fill up. And so this project, they ended up doing. Super Are we going to name them or have we decided whether or not we're going to um, name them? We don't maybe have to if you don't want to. Yeah, maybe okay. at the end I will. You know what I would love to do is honestly bring in like one of their team members because things I would love to. Yeah, and yeah. just like, and so this is sort of, let me get to that. So they ended up doing only a mint of about like a couple hundred. And then the people that did mint were like, yeah, oh, yeah, this is cool. And I think the floor was still above the mint price, the public mint price for a little bit. And it, no one then minted on the public mint. They maybe got another hundred and it just went to crap. Mm. The community revolted and it's super critical and what made it even worse is the team just just went dark they really stopped responding like very rarely would they respond they respond with oh yeah we're working on it oh behind the scenes you know we have this great marketing plan this is what we do we're marketers and we're, we're going to turn this around don't worry but nothing concrete no steps on what they were doing or how they were going to do it and the mods were kind of left to just just bring in all this stuff and, and try to just like calm everyone down, but they had no clarity either. So right now where this is at, they're, they're almost about 500 minted, which to me is fine. Like as a size, that is a fine size. But again, like I said, their overall mint size they were trying to focus on was almost 5,000. And they were making clear their number one priority was to fill that mint. So uh, you know, I'm not really invested in it. Like, I, I don't really care about the project or anything like that, but I'm just really curious about how it works. And so talking to some of the people in the discord and trying to get the attention of some of the team, I've just given them some advice or at least to think through some stuff that maybe they hadn't. So my suggestion for them at that stage was to essentially isolate what they can focus on, what they have control over, right? So they have control over the marketing aspect. What they don't have control over is this immense pressure right now that everyone's seeing. And to your point, when you don't mint out your entire mint early on, what this signals to investors or buyers, whatever you want to call them, is that the supply and demand, there's a massive disparity because you have this massive supply now and demand obviously is way lower than that supply. So if if you haven't minted out, especially you know after a week or two, and you have a, a very high supply, to new people coming in and looking at it, they're thinking, well, you obviously have way more than people want. And I'm getting into this, depending on the project, if they're getting into it with the intent for it to appreciate solely on whatever is already existing. If there's going to be something in the future, then that's a different story. But if it's on what's already existing and somebody comes in and looks at it and said, well, right now, less people want this than is available. How can this increase? I don't see any mechanisms that I will be better off purchasing now than later. It makes sense to wait. Maybe it'll shake you out. Great, I'll buy then. But why get in now? Because supply does not seem that it's going to, to, to match with demand correctly. And so you have then the floor prices drop, right? Because the mint stays the same. And so whoever has it also that already minted realizes, well, hey, like people aren't going to sell this thing out, which was my hope. My hope was that I would be in early that more people were gonna want this than was available. So I would have something that was scarce. There would be mm -hmm. more wanting it than that was available. And so the price that I got in, the mint price, would be a steal because people would actually wanna pay more than the mint price because now they can't just mint it. And so that's the hope from everybody that buys an NFT, that it'll be worth more in the future than what you paid for it. Yeah. But when you still have an outstanding mint to get out, you're competing against mint and whatever's on the market price. Yeah. So you have to charge at least less than the mint. And oftentimes, depending on the demand, if the demand is very low, you're going to be keep undercutting and undercutting and undercutting. And this is where you see this floor price just fall out. And the floor price will just go, 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 go. And it's so low, there's no incentive for anyone to mint either. Because yeah. the floor price on OpenSea or whatever these marketplace could be like a tenth of a mint price. So no one's going to mint. So my suggestion to the, the team was close mint, shut it down, right? You have, there's no shame in shooting for the stars to begin with and thinking that, you know what, maybe demand will be there and we can sell this thing out. But once the market tells you what the demand is, listen, and if the demand is only 500, only sell 500. That's yeah. okay. You can pause mint without burning the rest. 
And now you have this limited ecosystem of 500 and it's in a community. So now you're not competing against this, this mint. So whoever is in it, if they want to sell, that's, that's the world. Yeah. So if any additional person comes in, that's one more in demand. So now you have actually have an increase in demand compared to supply because yeah. you're restricted this 500. I've thought about that because I, I know like with, with our conversations about, you know, doing a project, uh, DAO slash NFT project, that is one thing that I was considering is maybe that would be, that would be the spiel where it's like, okay, we're going to do a mint that maxes out at N number, but it will only be open for X amount of days. And as that, you know, as that day run, you know, comes, comes closer, maybe more people will rush in because, you know, you have that impending event. They're going to be telling their friends, yo, you got three days left, get in on this. It's pretty cool. It looks like they're only going to have this many of them here, are the utilities, yada, yada, yada. And they, I mean, I've, I've seen them, I've seen Genesis uh, rounds done where it's like, okay, we have a, an ambition to do 5,000, but for, first we're going to start with 500 and yeah. It shows that you can get some success and you don't know at that point if there is a demand for 501. All you know is you sold out 500. So the next guy is going to go, oh, the last one sold out because that's what they want to see is I want to see that other people want this stuff because really we're all just animals following each other. And we go from going a JPEG is worth how much to, hey, baby, get, get my credit card, <laughs> you know? And it's yeah. just us believing each other. And it's like, oh, there's a, there's enough people in here. Like if you're the first one in the Discord, I, I don't know what that's like. It's got to be really weird when you're going into a Discord where it's like, I don't even join Discords if there's only a few hundred people in them. Like they have so to have I at will. least a few thousand. I, I, I will, again, just to see what it's like from that early stage. Like this is right now at this stage, and this is kind of my mindset in this whole project and even this, this podcast and show that we're doing, is to just learn. And so like, I'm just trying to like jump into as many things as I can from different snapshots, different times in their life cycle, just to see what it looks like. So I've been in some of these projects that had like 10 people in it just to oh, see, wow. all right, like, what does it look like for something to, to get to the next level? Or what does it look like when they don't? And yeah. a, a bunch of them have it. And you, you know, you're just in there, it's just sort of like you and like the founder and you're just sort of shooting the shit. And you're seeing, all right, you know, I, I'm not a vocal advocate for it. Like just because I'm in your group doesn't mean I'm beating the drum for it. Yeah. This is more me experiencing it. But I, so unlike you, I'm not necessarily turned off by something just because size isn't there. But I get that the market is like that doesn't mean I'm going to buy it if I'm in the discord. But that's a huge aspect. It's a Q effect, right? Like if you see a line out in front of a restaurant, you're more likely to think that restaurant's great, even yeah. though there's a line out in front of it. And it, it matters in the size of the restaurant. You can have. 10, a line of 10 people out in front of a, a little bar restaurant that only seats six inside. And it's going to seem like the best restaurant in the world. But if 10 people try to go into like a massive, like a RJ Gators or a big chain or something like that, said RJ, RJ Gators. Gators place hasn't been open in 20 years. Uh, yeah. So if you're going to have this line of people out of like a massive warehouse size restaurant of 10 people, it's, it's going to be dead. Right. So th this is like that supply and demand aspects. You have the hype element, but also the supply and demand disparity. And those are two really important parts for it. So this project, I advise them. I'm like, guys, shut down the mint. This is something in your control. You can pause mint and just focus then on doing what you're doing to draw attention back to the project, but restrict it to the limited supply that you have already created. This is what the supply told you it is at the beginning. Just listen to it and work from that. And then my next advice was preordain certain hurdle marks where you will then reopen a mint and make the mint very small to a sort of exclusive group of people, but say, you know, once the floor price gets to, I'm gonna throw it out, like one ETH, let's say. Let's say like right now it's at 0.1 ETH. When the floor price gets to one ETH, then you will open the mint and mint will be lower than the floor. So let's say mint will be, you know, 0.9 and all the existing holders then are have the exclusive first dibs for it. So let's say there's yeah. 500 that have it, you open for another 100. You like have 100 that. there. And you just sort of tear that up. You just keep going. And the next time it's open is when the floor is, you know, 1.2 or 1.25 or whatever. And same thing. Then that mint is uh, slightly higher as well. And so you're slowly leaking this out, but it's only based on proven demand for it. 
And that's the only time then that you're reaching out and you're adding more to this pool. And so it incentivizes the current users to sit there and say, yeah, you know, like this is a community I want to be a part of. There's obviously value there and I won't get diluted until it's worth more. Great. Of course. And this, anyone that wants the mints, you're not going to feel like you're being you're, you're competing against other mints or anyone else that's going to undercut you because everyone then wants to see it grow because these future mints are only going to occur if it's worth more money. So like, this is a fear that I think a lot of people have when they see mints and they're like, well, am, am I going to be com competing with a mint? If there's 2000 left and I mint and th they don't mint out, like I'm competing with the mint and the open sea. Yeah. So like you have this sort of competition in your mind of what, what's the likelihood of this increasing and just limiting the mint is a huge one because then the, you know, it's a two way competition. So this was my advice for them to do this, focus on that. And, and they agreed. And so it took a while to finally get a hold of somebody, which was pain in the butt. Uh, and just just sort of laid it out there first to the community. And then like, yeah, like just just talk to me one on one. So I talked to the the main guy and just laid out my bullet points. First, I had to just do it why it made sense for them. It's a pain because that's money out of their pocket. Right. That's that's the trade off. If you're a creator, you get all the mint. If you yeah. shut down the mint, you're missing out on a, on money coming straight to your pocket. But if a project's in a tailspin, you're not getting it anyways. Yeah. And so now it's not only money in your pocket, but like your name. And it you might also, it might also bitter the pot faster. Like you, you, you'll have a bunch of people who are pissed off in the group looking yeah. to abandon before it goes down. They start selling their stuff happening. more than they might've. And, oh, I've seen it. That, that one that we may or may not name, I think, uh, what'd you mint at? Like 0.04 it's at like 0.02 now, ETH. Yeah. I saw it yeah, today. I, mean, I got them on it, my watch list. Yeah, so that one, and and even that, that's what it's listed for, but they're not even moving. No one's buying yeah. it, again, because there's so no You can demand. put some offers in for less, and there goes four, plot, four floor plot price even more. Man, I can't get my floor price so, even so, more. Well, no, because isn't floor price the lowest listed price? Isn't that generally how that's quoted? I don't think it's the, the yeah. lowest, most recent transaction. But yeah, but I, I think a smart seller um, would realize he probably has to compete with the comps and you know just like selling houses and then the uh uh the the buyers i mean i know when i'm a buyer before i bid on anything i start looking at okay what's sold within the last week all right relative to that mm, i feel good about getting this or no you know what sold for half this. That, that could be a really good tool we could build too because i you know we were talking to blake about this how the floor price alone is a really poor metric for you it to is. gauge the, the current value and success, success certainly, but also value because to Blake's point, most of these projects have different tiers built in, Yeah. right? So you'll have like the really scarce tier, then you have like a, a more common tier and then like the common tier. So like the one that we're talking about right now, they have three tiers. They have a yeah. scarce one, a middle one and a lower one. And same thing, like the value, it would make sense that the lowest tier would sell for the lowest amount, right? Yeah. Because it's it's the most common. And, but that sets the floor for the whole project. Yeah. And so it's it's kind of a poor tool to gauge what the value of any individual one in there is. Yeah. And so the, the very easy tools. There has to be tools already for this. That'd be interesting. We should talk about that. If there's not, let's let's just make one. But yeah. a tool that just sort of takes into account. I know there's like Rarity Sniper and a lot of different Rarity things, but they don't do a good job of telling you like what the expected value should be for them which is no. super easy. And but I then was, also take, taking in, like like you were saying, actual offers, because offers are more important than what people are listing. Like, like That's what someone wants to buy it for. That That's what I'm more concerned about. What, what's someone going to pay me for something, not what are people willing to sell it for? So there's a bit bid ask spread there. And I, I think you should be more concerned about the bid than the ask. Yeah. And I, another thing I was, I was playing around with a, a spreadsheet to come up with a calculator. And it's one of those things where, there's always going to be subjectivity um, and a lot of variables like are these, you know, one of ones, are they all identical? But what I was trying to do was I was coming up with, I was trying to come up with a calculator that would consider, you know, the, the rarity score from a third party, um, the recent prices. And really, if you wanted to be super accurate, you'd probably do, I don't know, maybe like you could play around with the last seven days, last 30 days or something like that, but get something that comes up with some kind of metric of, okay, this one has a rarity score of 150. It sold for X. 
and whatever other variables you, it needs to consider for the calculation. And, and it, like I said, it gets slippery slope and gets kind of hard. And at the end of the day, subjectivity is going to, you know, be a ma major factor. But OK, we got the 150 rarity score that sold for this. Now I'm looking to buy this 350 rarity score. And I had, you know, it's a one of one. So there's not really an identical one, but there's other 350s that are out there. But in kind, but they haven't sold or maybe one sold, but it was six months ago. So that price versus today's price, it's, it's not really comparable, but something that could kind of give you an idea as to what range it wouldn't be stupid to bid in. And, and I mean, it might be useless because you could bid on a number you feel confident on and then something happens the next day. Yeah. But there, there's so many things that people can do to manipulate the, 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 inputs for that and yeah you see that tons of times right like floor sweeping floor sweeping is really common for a lot of projects they themselves will go in and just sweep that floor and again yeah. to just make it appear that that minimum value and board apes higher. it's just there's, there's nothing wrong with that board apes they're notorious yeah. for doing that they'll sell well, it, theirs at this and then they buy up another one at this and it's it's just cleaning up the floor and raising up the the inherent value yeah, I, I mean, that's built into a lot of roadmaps too. Like you'll see like when they get to 20%, 50%, whatever sold, they'll take whatever money they have and dedicate a certain percentage to sweep the floor, to raise that floor price because it is an important consideration, unfortunately, for a lot of these people in these groups because it's just reducing the value. They're just buying up. It's, it's like a share buyback is really what it is. And so they're, they're buying up whatever people in their minds value it lower than the rest of them. Like, okay, great. We'll bring that back into our supply and then we'll resell that at a higher price. We won't compete against you guys. And so like, that's not inherently bad, but it is something to consider because a lot of these inputs aren't true barometers of the this demand for the projects. So like my idea, if you were starting over with a project would be never let it get to a public mint. Never let it get to public mint. There's very little value in getting to public mint Start with your what with your whitelist. Build in an element of time there that if they don't get in, like these people that do like whitelist for like three days, like it's nice, like that's great, you're giving them that, but it's too long. Do a very short period that at least it's constrained. Parkinson's law, like you will take as long or as little as time is available to you. Like you can get it done, or yeah. it'll take you the entire time. Yeah, you get five. If you get five weeks or five minutes, your uh, the time to complete the task will expand or contract. And so, like you need a whitelist. I would then like really pause for a while and hype whatever the next price is. The next price should honestly probably be another whitelist. Like yeah. I would keep it closed, whatever that is that limited whitelist let them bask and be an exclusive give them that that vibe that now they are in let them promote it for a while even if it's like another month ideally like a week but let that be the exclusive holders of it while you build up another list of whitelists that's now selling at a higher price so the first whitelist people knew that they got in and they're at and you're not screwing them over so it's still transacting on whatever marketplace it is probably at a pretty high price now because there is some exclusivity to it and then the next tier is a higher price. So they know like, hey, the very least, this will be higher. There's a, a price dictation that's going to be higher than what I buy in. I want to get in this next white list. What do you think and the so risk then, of that increase in price diminishes future demand so much that even fewer are minted? Like we do 500 sells out on the first white list. Yeah. Or let's say we, we start with 5,000. We do 500 at first and that's where we cut it off. And then we're like, all right, we're closing it. We'll open it so, up again. So I, I think cutting it off is probably the mistake. Like, I, I don't know if you should give restrictions on how many a whitelist people can mint. What about date? Uh, what about time frame restriction? So it's unlimited amount. Time frame. Well, not unlimited amount, but as many. Yeah, so, so you can. So, so let's say, let's say like, you know, your total mint that you're comfortable of doing is 5,000, right? So you have 5,000 ready to go. You build up your whitelist to, I don't know, let's say you get 500 on the whitelist, right? So you have 500 and um, you give them, yeah, I, I don't even know if I'd give them, I guess 10, I'd limit it to 10 each. So at the very least, everyone there had the availability to get it. Chances are you're probably only get 10% of them and not at 10 each. So let's say you only sold another 500. So now you have 500 outstanding. Um, if 
you then open the whitelist again to the next tier and it only you only end up selling 250 then you only sell 250 like that's that's the d- the demand for it and then gradually you'll just get closer and closer to the actual demand by the next tier whoever would have just found it on OpenSea and bought it or whoever would have minted it public they're going to find it the same way they're still going to go to your discord or whatever it is and like learn a little bit about the project and you're you're not going to get it impossible to get on this whitelist you're, you're essentially just pre-ordering right yeah. like without the world seeing this disparity between what you're offering and who wants it you're letting the pre-orders come in and then only releasing those pre-orders so you're constantly only supplying or what are, what there's demand for so okay. you're creating this perfect match of supply and demand without the world seeing that there may be a disparity like that just makes tons of sense to me because you're never getting too far ahead of yourself you're never looking like that the, this project's is kind of too far ahead of its skis and you're incentivizing everyone with this gradual higher price, higher price, higher price to see that there is this increase in pegged value that at the very least, like you're not going to get diluted until it gets higher. And so I, I don't know if there's a shame in sort of under minting, that would be the downside, right? Like you're just not going to have this chance for this massive mint potentially, but you are, if you have enough people that want to buy on the white list. And then if it's, it's massively successful for those f- first 500, and they do a great job of spreading the word, or if you have this really good utility and it's paying off, you're showing that. I think people are just afraid that they're not going to be able to follow through and they just want to get it all the very beginning because yeah. like it's it's a horse race at that point. Like they, they just want to get everything in and hope that they hit the jackpot as a creator because they're not confident in their ability to actually see through in value. If there's a utility play, get some people on board, build your community, close it temporarily, follow through on what you want to do, open it up, get a little more in and just keep doing that and just keep raising the price, raising the price, raising the price. And if, if it's something of value or if something that people are interested in, they'll get in and pay a little bit more, especially since it's a scarce drop. Yeah, I think uh, I think I'm actually going to take some of these ideas. I, I had an idea that was kind of related to this for a DAO proposal for um, that one group I, I mentioned that they don't care about the fact that they haven't minted like one person when we had a, a live uh, chat or whatever voice chat the other day, one person was like, what do you guys think of lowering the mint price? And everybody immediately was like, no, no boy. No, we're not doing no, that. Lowering the mint price. I think is a terrible idea. And the, the, the proposal was like, we could lower the mint price and then incentivize. And I guess some projects have done this. And then you incentivize everybody who paid the, the previous mint price. I don't know if it'd be a refund or I don't know what it would be, but I like the idea, idea better saying like okay raise it you know we've decided we're gonna shut it down at, in in three days and five days or whatever else so get while the getting's good if not we we're gonna consider opening it up at some point once we've reached some of the goals but right now we've got enough money and like you said before we're gonna wait for the floor to get and i don't even see a problem with that being a um a public thing you say but like we're we're going to no, wait no. for certain things. I, I think it's better. I think you need, you yeah. need to set that public, you know, like just put that out there. Like this is what our requirements are. This is, this is the roadmap. We are waiting on this. As long as you put it out there and you stick with it, people love that. They yeah. want to know what's going on and what the future of it is and have it ahead of time. So yeah. I think you need to make that public. And if, and if I were to say, when we do open it back up, it's going to be more expensive. The people who mm-hmm. are already holding one, where they, they got it at a mint or secondary market, they will get first dibs at getting at it at a slightly reduced price. You know, we're going to bump it up this much. We'll give you this much. And then we're going to open it up to, you know, the new whitelist people. Exactly. Then you have your floor right here on the second, the second market. And you have the people who are already in who are like, okay, well, I can't lose because when it comes up to here, I'll be able to sell this on the second market here. Yep. Then you have other people who aren't able to get in and they'll just be like, you know what? I'm going to scoop up the floor and then hopefully get that one that I really want in the mint or in, and I'll have that first dib in the mint, not hit full price. I'll get the 80% price. I yep. miss it out at, you know what? I like that. Yeah. I like that. that. I'm going to put that in a DAO proposal. That, that's exactly, exactly my thoughts. And so have you, that's, have the, you voted in a DAO yet? Have you proposed in a DAO yet? Uh, no, no, I haven't. Oh, it's, it's uh, it's invigorating, especially in a, in a new DAO where like there's only five proposals and you know that a good amount of people are going to see what you're, you're putting in. It's like, I don't know, almost historic. Like if, if the project really becomes something, it's like, I don't know, it's tied to your wallet and everything because it has to verify it. So it, it can keep in some places. Um, I don't know if 
the group I'm in does this or not, but I know some groups, if they accept your proposal in the DAO, sometimes there's a reward. So you bring a good idea, there's, there's a, there might be a little gift or yeah, yeah, a little, little little ETH, but um, I think that's good. We're coming up on on an hour. I think that that was a a good kind of all over the place. I don't know if Ty, Ty going to say goodbye. Probably not. Um, Hey guys, just want to say, get buy my NFTs, Radio Shack. We're going to, we're going to just ape into it. We're going to the moon Lambo with my library. (laughs) Why don't you get audible? Hey man, Audible doesn't look cool on video. Hey, just a suggestion. <laughs> just a suggestion. All right. Good. Well, uh, another, thanks another for great tuning session. in. Good chatting. Yeah, I'm I'm excited about the interviews we have coming up and some of the other plans. We got to get better at mentioning some of this stuff and pushing it in the beginning. But uh, eh, we'll we'll we'll, get we'll it. save it for another we're, time. We're not hype people. We're we're here just to share our knowledge and stuff like that. We're not overhyping. We're not Ty Lopez in this. Yeah. No offense, Ty. None taken. All right, bud. Later. Be good. See everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. I want to make sure you don't forget to check out the information and the links in the show notes. Some of that stuff is going to get you into freebies and raffles and contests and all sorts of other promotions. But also, we've got a private group dedicated to our listeners and our followers. We would love to see you there. Love to see you collaborate, join, and get exclusive content that we are only distributing through these other means. Speaking of distributing through other means, I want to make sure that you're also subscribed to our podcast, our YouTube channel, and again, join that private group so you know everything that we know as soon as we know it.